Hello everyone, welcome back to the sixth episode of Star Trek Adventures Cerberus Station. Sorry if, once again for the month delay, but sh we should be back on a regular uh, bi-weekly schedule from now on, from this point forward. Um, I just want to give a quick shout out to Adam Coppola. Um, you can find him on DeviantArt, uh, Adam K-Pop, for the full render of Starbase Deep Space 15, aka Cerberus Station which you can now see front and center of the stream. So, thanks a lot, Adam. And without further ado, I believe we will go straight to the cap or the science officer's log. Chief Science Officer's Log, Stardate 82522.0. Since I shipped out to DS15 and for a star base in the midst of a cosmic hellscape, I Guess I was expecting some part of me. Uh, you know, I thought I'd find it a little more quiet. Though spared from distractions from the diplomats and brass that the station obviously attracts, uh, brained running a department of this size. I've had biologists butting heads with xenoanthropologists. Uh, lab resources that the physicists want, uh, they keep demanding more time in the sensor array while we try to keep astrometrics at work. I'm not really sure if it was worse on the Enceladus when everything was personal, or now that I've got full departmental infighting. I guess it's appropriate being stationed by the gates of hell. Way to focus the department with the arrival of some new visitors. A large school of Cosmozoa have arrived in the nebula over the past week, evidently attracted by the gases of this stellar nursery. Almost everyone on the science ring, and then some have turned their attention to these new guests. I've got to admit, it's tempting to set aside some of the other projects and Lieutenant Galen's latest holography notes, especially if that means classifying a new species of Platycephalus cosmozoa. All right. And on that note, as the science officer has clearly has stated, uh, the uh, Karsarai Nebula has recently received several... Um, tens if not about a hundred or so of space-based creatures that have been darting in and out of the gases in some form of feeding or at least what you think is feeding so they will appear don't let their simple size fool you they are um, roughly scale three to scale four in size uh, easily larger than any shuttlecraft or slipnir class ships you have uh, but for the moment, they appear to be ha, huh, completely benign, M more or less, more than likely, just feeding on nebula gases and doing what small herd creatures do. <coughs> and on that note, so we are going to st we're we're going to go quickly go and see what people wish to do with this particular species, or speciesies, multiple species, whatever. <laughs> Um, Master Chief Ember, uh, what would you like to be doing, either directly or indirectly, or not at all related to these species? I'm on the bridge. All right. Looking at the view screen, and I just turn to whoever's next to me, whether it be a person or an NPC, and I say, I "Wonder what they taste like." Well, that's a good question. I'm not finding that out, Master Chief. Ah, uh, you gotta live a little. I mean, look at it. It's right there. I mean, that thing could feed hundreds, if not thousands. We're still considering it sentient life. We're not touching it. I just kind of look around the bridge. Uh, are there any humans here? Um, let's, considering the multi-diversity of this, the, is the captain around? Uh, he would be, yeah. Okay. Captain's human. I point at the captain. I say, Captain, you silly cow, don't you? Um, it's not really my thing. Are you trying to compare these things to cows? I believe I am. Back home, we have a very long and complex name for them, but to say it in a few seconds, I would say it is simply tasty. He just kind of has that confused look of like, okay, and then just turns back to watching the view screens. 
Excellent. And seeing I'm not getting any traction, I just say, well, if one lollygags or ends up injured, I'm eating it. I'm just going to throw that out there. Noted, Master Chief. Uh, Lu- Sorry? I was just going to turn to uh, Lieutenant Barnett. What are the skins coming out on these creatures? Oh, well, labs are still running analytics right now. Um, I guess that would be reason and science if we want anything up here mm-hmm. um, or anything more sophisticated. Um, can give you the basic rundown as far as what we've been learning. Uh, in essence, uh, they're space fish is pretty much the way to think about this. And I take it xenobiology would apply here. It would, yes. Yeah. As far as I can tell, Captain, um, they appear to uh, they appear to actually consume some of the stellar gases uh, within the nebula here. And... All right, checking my bits of detail here. Uh, first, that check was a... And that was three successes there, so we can parse out more on that in a moment, or like whatever information I roll my way. Otherwise, I would just say, yeah, they're still running a lot of scans in order to observe their behavior. The xenobiologists want to try and understand uh, how they might compare to, say, behavior in herds of Gekli or Garmagander or other Cosmozoa. Um, yeah, they're. Thus far, space fish. Space fish. Neat... Yeah. So what you're saying, Lieutenant, is that I should go prepare some tartar sauce. Oh, uh, well, I mean, they're so, uh, as far as their diet goes, Master Chief, I'd think that between the hard radiation that they've been exposed to, which their biology can tolerate possibly a bit better than yours, and the, uh, well, the relative texture that when they've been exposed and indeed live in hard vacuum as they do, um, you might need something a little bit more sophisticated to chew than those uh, you've got there. I like to think they're Mark Fives, thank you very much, but your information gives me things to think about. And if anyone looks at Ember's console, I am literally trying to figure out how the hell do you eat this thing. (laughs) If you haven't been able to tell, Ember has not eaten breakfast yet, and she's very hungry. (laughs) I just turned. You know, Master Chief, there's a replicator over there if you're hungry. Eh, nah, I need real stuff. You know how it is. Only so much replicated meat before it just isn't the same anymore. I lived on a station my entire life, and I'm still fine with it. Now, don't yes. get me wrong. A real thing is still good, but replicator's fine. See, that's the difference, sir. I grew up sort of back on the home world, and again, we have a variety of very tasty species. In fact, I should probably just stop speaking of them before my stomach and then her stomach grows. A localized space quake rocks the op center as Ember's stomach rumbles. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Larsai, Lieutenant Yam- Yamato, where yeah. uh, are you doing anything in relation to this discovery, or are you off pursuing something else? Um, I'd probably be uh, in my lab work. I- I, th- I think this is about time. I think we might as well get the uh, one session, uh, I, I, one scene of research, uh, I, one scene of developments on the suits per session out of the way. All right. Uh, so you will be in... Uh, that will be under the... I think we put you in this lab here. Yes, I believe you are in your robotics lab, not paying any attention to the fish, so the, the space fish outside. Yeah, yeah, th- those aren't my, those aren't my, the space fish aren't my interest. Tech is my interest. Indeed, it is. Let's get the players down to the map. There we go. Yep. Oh. And uh, 
Yeah, Florce said, uh, looking over the uh, stat, over some of the things she's going to need to do with the suit, mm -hmm. and uh, power, power source is obviously an issue. Uh, either improving thr improving fuel efficiency or or just making a new power source for the thrusters or and everything else. And uh, yeah, I was going to. I, I was going to ask, ask a specialist if uh, it was possible to potentially use Borg, Borg technology on this. So uh, I think uh, Usha. All right. If you wish to bring in Usha, we can do that. Sure. Okay. Um, just feel free to get the scene going while I find various tokens. All right. So you uh, she... asked for me, Lieutenant. Uh, yes, um, and uh, Larce will uh, call up a spec, uh, a, a little blueprint of some of the things she's intending to do with the suit. And uh, I was wondering, I, we're going to need a new power source, given some of the increased output we're going to have for for this stuff, and. You're you're the expert on Borg technology here. Would you be able to uh, help me? Uh, would you be able to figure out if we could potentially repurpose some, uh, repurpose some old Borg, uh, some power cell, some Borg power cells or something to work power this thing? So she kind of squints at you a little bit, like warily, and says, "All right. So first, I can see I need to dispel some preconceptions about Borg technology. Trust me, I have had this same question asked me about six hundred times on the way here. So first things first, Borg technology—it isn't like the Holy Grail. It's just nanotechnology. That if it gets out of hand, you have a problem. Second of all." power cells on based on what i know of your project you're looking at sort of either infusing someone with quite a lot of nanotechnology or you're straight up just miniaturizing a warp reactor now of course that is possible with nanotechnology would i advise using borg nanotech for that probably not because, as I said, the moment Borg technology gets out of control, oh no, we suddenly have another collective. So, I guess my answer to your question is, I could do it. Would I? Eh. Right. Well, maybe, maybe not using Borg technology directly, but perhaps we could use it as a base, a baseline to develop something new. Well, let me ask this. Are you looking for a sustained power cell? Are you looking for a quick burst of power? These are all things that factor in, because if you overtax the powerhouse of the cell, which we all know is the mitochondria, then you have problems. But, you know, even nanotechnology has its limits. Right. Well, probably some sustained power for thr for extra for thrust uh, for continuous thrust would be a good I idea but also some uh, it may maybe a mix of the two S some for the thrusters some for the phaser emitters cuz the the phasers you don't need to go for full continuous streams of power just small bursts for cutting tools or self defense well as one of my other expertises happens to be energy manipulation, I can tell you that your problem is not going to be storing the energy. It's releasing it. Because if you don't do it properly, what you'll end up doing is either cooking the person inside the suit or, hmm, how do I put this? Have you ever seen someone on fire tumbling through space? Uh, <laughs> I don't think I have, but I assume that's probably going to be what would happen. Yeah, it uh, it does not build character. In fact, it does quite the opposite. Gotcha. All right. Well, well okay. So, storing the power is not the issue. It's finding convenient. It's coming up with ways to release it properly and such. Yep. 
And uh, the heat problem, you can solve a little bit with heat sinks, but uh, uh, you're probably going to want to find some old Terran enthusiast. They know a lot more about heat sinks than I do. Right. Well, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And uh, if you need anything else, I'm just sort of staring at the Transwarp Hub 24-7. Sorry, 26-7, so. Gotcha. And then Usha just sort of sidles on out. Okay, so just to see how well things go towards things. Um, Miss Yamato, um, just let me, if you could roll a, let's roll a insight engineering roll. Uh, difficulty of four, because basically everything... Usha just told you is going to be rather difficult with the current level of technology. Um, okay, insight engineering. Yeah, so difficulty of four. Um, we don't have any momentum yet, but you do have your determination, or you could give me threat. I do like threat for extra dice. Yeah. Um, I think it's a bit early to spend determination, so I'll, I'll do some threat. <laughs> All right. How many dice are you going to buy? I'm going to buy an extra two for a total of four. All right. So three dice or three threat to me. Yep. And I assume the experimental technology focus would work for this? That it would, yes. All right. Here goes. Well, there's your four successes. Congratulations. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, uh, it, it will take you the better part of a day of tinkering and relearning some mechanics, or re relearning thermodynamics, uh, figuring out which laws of physics you can break and which ones you can just bend a little, and possibly using various uh, technology that may or may not be Federation standard. But you eventually find some way to beat the uh, power issues at least for you know regular use it's not going to withstand your this possible suit is not going to withstand you know constant constant use or prolonged firing but you find something and if you f so feel free to find uh come up with some sort of techno babble thing at some point but, right okay so that is progress made there um let's move up where is my list of players? There it is. Uh, Commander Galen, or Lieutenant Commander Galen. Wait, is it Lieutenant Commander, Lieutenant, no, or... Sorry, <laughs> Lieutenant Galen, I'm sorry. It's okay. It's Chief. Just so funny how I, I, I keep yeah. getting promoted without knowing. Dr. Galen, <laughs> there we go. Galen just... Admiral add, Galen. Adds a holographic pip every so often just to see if Ember notices. Oh. <laughs> or the captain. <laughs> I've been a captain a couple times and he hasn't noticed yet. Yes. <laughs> um, I'd probably be in the medical uh, sick bay, of course, uh, mm -hmm. watching over the students do the life science scans. Okay. Uh, I'd have them all do their work separately so I can do comparisons, see their tactics, uh, and see if I can, you know, help them or if they're doing just fine. Okay. Are they taking scans of just test subjects within the infirmary? Uh, the life signs outside, actually. Oh. I want to see how they handle something new. Ah. Um, this is going to poke... But there is a xenozoology lab. Ooh. Oh, God, what is that? I'm not sure, but it came standard with the set pick, so... Oh. <laughs> oh. I think it was the thing that uh, Reboot Kirk dealt with on uh, Delta Vega. Next to it, says on a panel, do you want to know more? <laughs> yes, I do, Mr. <laughs> All right. So Galen is in there. Um, the cadets have been on station now for about two months and are progressing fairly well in their studies. And everyone's been fine with me. None of the cadets have been, you know, scoffing at me. There may have been a couple attempts to see what they could do with your hollow matrix without your knowledge, but that was early on, and you crushed the any sign of early rebellion. Okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna 
go examine their work, and, right. you know, give them pointers here and there if I see something being done wrong. Very well. Uh, Commander Dolrum, um, anyth- is there anything you'd like to do after your talk with Ember about uh, breakfast choices? I would just be in my office doing my normal paperwork as executive officer. Fair enough. Captain Crawford? Um, hmm. There was something I talked with you earlier about, and I'm not sure if now would be an appropriate time to do it. I think now would be a fine time. Okay. Um, I guess a couple of character questions. Yep. Other than Jensen, do we have any other members of the Breen Confederacy on board Deep Space 15? Uh, no. Jensen is the only Breen representative. Okay. And we don't have good communications, so we couldn't exactly have a higher up from them in on this, what I want to do. Okay. Um, I'm just going to call the senior staff and Jensen to get to the conference room. Oh, conference room. Okay. Everyone in the conference room. Let's f- fill it out. And you wanted, so that I believe is everyone. We just need Jensen. Okay. Uh, Jensen is. All right. Jensen is present. I believe everyone is accounted for. Assuming everyone wishes to join in on this. Yeah, he he's not going to make it a mandatory thing. Yeah. The only person that's probably going to be mandatory for is Jensen. And then whoever else wants to be there can be there. All right. True to, true to his log, Barnett will probably... Uh, Stick away, or stay away from the meeting. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, Lars is probably uh, <laughs> neck busy, deep in research. Busy breaking the laws of physics. Okay. <laughs> Ember, Galen, you guys sticking around or? Sure, I'll stick around. Sure. Cool. All right. <clears throat> See, and as Jensen walks in, I have a kind of like small box like something that a metal would be in uh it's very nice kind of like uh wooden and he kind of sets it aside uh Grelic jensen uh i'm glad you were able to come down here he's just gonna look at you for a solid second and they're like yeah well i guess i should Pull out the little speech I have prepared here, and he'll pull up a very small data pad. In light of recent events here on Deep Space 15, much of my crew acted valiantly to ensure that things on the station could... Excuse me. Return to its normal duties as quickly as possible. But one man went as far as to risk his life, even without proper cause to. Grelick Michael Jensen. He managed to mitigate the explosion of a makeshift bomb that was in the station... Uh, gravely injuring himself in the process. It is because of this action that I am proud to present Grelick Jensen with the Star Cross as a show of gratitude to both himself and the Breen Confederacy for giving us such an officer. He'll kind of open the wooden box that he has and hand it to Jensen. He's just going to look at you, hit the panel, and walk out. Well done, sir. Galen's just gonna look at them like, I've done his medical workup. He's had a interesting secondary augmentation done to him. I'm assuming by the brain. It's to deal with the aggressive tendencies. They've heightened it, and he's suppressing it as much as he can. I suggest let's not push him. Hmm. I mean, personally, I saw that coming. Did did honestly no one else see that coming? I kind of saw it coming. I figured it would happen, but I, the thought counts. I think it's because you called him a man. Human. He does not refer to himself in such a manner. He... Everything from the reports, he is quite angry towards humanity. Rightfully so, in his uh, views and eyes. Oh, that's true, but imagine that going at least a little better than it did. Um, 
Well, you're still talking, which is, I think, a plus. <laughs> I guess it can be. And he kind of has another data pad pulled up where he's typing out a report to the Confederacy. And he kind of finishes it up and sends it off. Well, um, and he kind of, you know, does that kind of like awkward finger tap thing on the box. Um, unless any of you have any immediate or urgent questions for me or matters to attend to, um, you're all dismissed. It was a good speech, sir. And he's just going to transfer himself right back to sick bay. <laughs> Ops to Captain Crawford. This is Crawford. Captain, uh, this is Lieutenant Darval. We've had a, uh, we have a proximity trigger through one of the uh, transwarp gateways. It appears that a ship of un, a non-scheduled ship is entering through one of the gates. Um, I'll be right there. And out of character, would a like site-to-site -site transportation to the bridge be faster than taking a turbo lift? Uh, considering that, that the... Uh, well, because the conference room is right near Ops, isn't it? The conference room is literally attached to Ops, so you are... Never mind! Ops is... <laughs> uh, let me get on the right layer. Ops is... Or the conference room is this meeting room right here. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. <clears throat> well, never mind. I guess Jensen's there, but Galen's not, because he's yeah. still walking out. Yeah. Yeah, let's see. Okay, who is not there? Barnett is on the one of the labs doing Barnett things. Nope. All right, there we go. Okay, cool. I believe that is everyone in their necessary place. Cap, uh, as you all stride out from the um, stride out from the conf from the ops room, <clears throat> Darval spins in his chair. Uh, Captain, the proximity alert came from uh, the a gate located in what we believe to be the delta, what appears to be in the delta quadrant. Hmm. Uh ship familiar to our logs or not at all unknown sir the point are we do not yet have a reliable connection for a significant amount of data traffic to flow between us and the remote gates all that we're able to receive right now is proximity alerts hmm assuming and he said it was from the delta quadrant that is logical sir okay Um, whenever it's on view, get it on screen. Um, in that case, let's. We don't know if this ship is hostile or friendly, so yellow, ah, uh, yellow alert just to be safe. Under. Okay. The station goes to yellow alert. I recenter this, and through one of the gates, let's say gate two, uh, pops a. A uh, fairly large ship. It is scale six. <clears throat> um, it appears at first glance to be multiple uh, spheres all joined together through a fairly robust uh, scaffolding system. It, um, it appears to be uh, leaking a form of uh, green toxic gas. Hmm. And... I'm uh, I'm just gonna go like as out of character. Yeah. I know what it is, but yeah. in character, Ember is just gonna sort of run a starship recognition symbol because I'm pretty sure Voyager's logs are somewhere in the database. Oh, absolutely! All this station has all r logs related to it. Um, you could use the momentum, so this will be um, e uh, Insight Con or Insight Security if you just want. Something along those lines, that would work well. Uh, station can assist with computers plus... I guess computers plus con would work best for starship recognition. Computers plus con, I can roll for the station. All right. Oh, well, there's two successes already. Two successes already, good start. <clears throat> All right. 
And what does the station give you? And there's three momentum. Alrighty. It pops up nearly immediately as a Malon waste hauler. Sir, we're looking at a Malon waste hauler. Uh, according to the logs here, Voyager encountered one in a uh, subspace module or some science thing. Long story short, sir, they were responsible for dumping toxic waste pretty much throughout a sector. Uh, Voyager's response was to blow them up, which I actually like, so I just sort of hover over the big red button. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what happens here, and I'm going to send out a an open hailing frequency. Let's see if we can stop this situation before we just blow them up instantly. Okay. And what are you going to say with your open hailing frequency? Malon ship, this is Captain Crawford of Deep Space 15. What are you doing here? There is a brief uh, burst of static as a communication system tunes itself to your frequency. And it's not long before this handsome gentleman appears on screen. Oh boy. Yeah. Aye. Starfleet? Those alien traders told us that there would not be any civilized races in this sect through this gate that would interfere with my waste disposal. And where does their information that I paid so dearly for dump me? Right at the base of more Starfleet. If it wasn't for Janeway and her antics causing problems. Now I find that there's you over here. Ugh, I need to get a refund. Well, as you can see, there's quite a bit of civilized life here. And your toxic waste doesn't belong here. I suggest turning back. Absolutely. Jensen in the back is just like, wow, that guy's ugly. <laughs> Sir, permission to take out the trash. I assume he doesn't like move when I tell them to leave? <laughs> no, of course not. I paid very good money to find this spot. You and your Starfleet have apparently... And while he's talking, yeah. I'm just going to kind of give the signal to Darval, like the Picard like neck cut to cut off the communication. Ah, yes. Uh, he is... Uh, after a couple minutes, his uh, near um, narcissistic or possibly sociopathic ranting uh, mutes itself as Darval gives you a silent thumbs up. Master Chief Ember, if we blow up this ship, do we have a way of cleaning the toxic waste out of the atmosphere? Ember opens her mouth and has an idea occur to her in that very moment, and she says, okay, this, either this is a very good idea and it's fortuitous that this is what's going on, or it's a very bad idea. Either way, here's what it is. You know those totally space fish that I'm going to eat at some point? What if they ate the radiation? Um, it's not a terrible idea. And provided that I, it doesn't kill them. Yeah. Um, have where is where are the nerds when you need them? I just look around the bridge. Where are the nerds? <laughs> I assume that the Malon ship hasn't tried to contact us again. As far as he's concerned, he's still talking. You're just not listening. He's, he's muted the conversation. It's, it's still an active channel. Oh. Master Chief, send a... And he kind of like makes air quotes with his fingers. Warning shot. And see if that changes their mind on leaving. Well... You've just given Ember a green light, which is a very bad idea. So I'm going to fire a torpedo salvo. Ooh. Oh, God. And uh, okay. we're going to see what happens. Okay. <laughs> this will be fun. So that's, uh, what, three threat to me for that? Yup. Yeah, three okay. threat to you. 
and I'm going to spend one momentum because I want a third die. All right. If someone could get the uh, station's weapons security for me, please. I got I'll it. Get it. I, I'll, I'll get it. I'll, I'll roll for the <laughs> station. Go ahead. Does this mean we're going up to red alert? Just a meta question. So, um, well, there's the three successes we need. Yeah, I would almost say no, because the Malon probably aren't really that much of a threat. Fair enough. I just, I know that shields automatically go up, and I, I'm, I guess every Trek space combat simulator has charged weapons when we went to red alert. Gotcha. I mean, we've had to fire them how many times? So Ember probably has a very specific scenario when Red Alert gets activated. Very true. Mm -hmm. so okay. Do you want me to actually roll damage? Let's or... see. what. How do we want to play this? You know what? I'm going to spend some threat on this. So yes, please roll. I'm going to roll oh, some dear. threat just to say that the shots do well. So yeah, let's roll some uh, damage, please. I'm assuming you're not using the transphasic torpedoes. Oh, God, no, no. <laughs> we don't want to blow them up that bad. You just hear clapping from the back and from Jensen. <laughs> well, it's also because I think, what, we only have so many transphasic, and it's a war crime to use them without Pretty much. authorization. So. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> if it's like All Voyager, right. we'll just find more to make, like magic. It'll be fine. <laughs> Wow, was it really only five challenge die? Challenge? Huh. Yeah, despite... Yeah, apparently torpedo damage does not scale with... Does not increase with the scale of the ship. Which... Do we look. not have quantums? Because I... Uh, huh. uh, I... I was going rules as written for the station, and it came... I had to cut the quantum torpedo launcher and... Well, I but... think that the torpedoes kind of make up for that with, like, high yield... Yeah. Uh, Right. Like those kind of talents, uh, which are massive damage boosters. I don't remember what they do right no. offhand. But I've got the uh, core book, so I'll open it up and take a look. So that's two damage here. I'm wondering, I mean, I know what Ember would do. She would spend the momentum because she wants to blow the thing up. But, I mean, you have permission now, from the captain. Yeah. I've got permission. All right, questions. we're spending two. We're spending two momentum to get rid of four resistance, okay. and then I'm spending one threat to reroll those three zero. Okay. All right, that is uh, five damage, uh, piercing four. Five piercing four. Okay. And if I'm correct too, the salvo uh, actually adds. You're right. Uh, I get another challenge four. Yes, it does. <clears throat> Let's just make that six effect. piercing four. Yeah. Fun. Okay, and because it's high yield, I believe that adds an additional damage. Additional per breach for every breach. Ah, additional breach for every breach. Right. Okay. So that is. Um, I don't have a my breach table loaded yet. So if you could do me a favor and just roll me a d20 just to see where it hits. Uh, just one breach? How many oh, breaches? Uh, sorry, yeah. So let's see, this is a scale 6 structure of that. And you deal that much uh. damage. Uh, let's see, it eats through the shield, and then it will just cause one breach, so plus, so two breaches because of high yield. So wait a second, it got through all the shields? Does it cause damage after the uh, shields? Oh yes, right. Because then that's four breaches. Oh shit, yes. Oh, language on stream. Yeah. yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Well, the, you've you've damaged whatever system you shot at. Mm-hmm. I have. Uh, so a 17, a 10, a 10, and a 7 offhand. I think one of those is structure. Yeah, structure is a lot, is the bulk of it. Cool. Which, ironically, could actually injure the captain. Not our captain, their captain. And make it so he can't respond. Well, or okay. the or the waste containers, quite frankly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. God. So, uh, just double check my math here, because Starship Combat is still fairly new to me. Uh, tw so it has twelve shields, or had twelve shields, I believe. And then, so that was six, piercing of, 
pure, six oh, damage. Oh, if it has 12 shields, then I only do two breaches. Uh, only two breaches. Okay, so what were the first 2d20? 17 and a 10. Okay, I believe the 17 is definitely structure, and I think the 10 might be computers. Yay. Okay. Well, the other thing that uh, Barnett brought up is it does also have spread, so it also takes three damage to the shield. So net shield's loss is nine, but it only has two breaches. Okay. <clears throat> Duly noted. Okay. Uh, it is rocked hard, and the ship l starts leering towards the gate as the um, captain... Or as the uh, station receives another hail. Captain, I believe they wish to talk to us again. Patch them through. I do so. Have you lost your damned minds? This thing explodes. It'll spread antimatter waste between here and wherever three light years is from here. I asked you to turn back. You didn't. So leave now, and we won't have to worry about that. Grumbles. Uh, he, he has a fairly heated conversation with the individual right next to him. Captain, if you are you familiar with the, what were they called again? The Ferrang? The Fer Ferrakar? No. <clears throat> the Ferrari? No. The, the Ferengi? Yes. Do you know them? We actually just had some of their delegates on board this station. They uh, offered us a good deal to f for a new place to dump our goods. Said it was perfect. No one would interfere, they said. <sighs> hmm. Why does that not surprise me? Then you don't know the Ferengi very well, Captain. I expect reimbursement, Captain for lost wages or at least a refund <sighs> and that you take that up with the Ferengi not me whenever I find those long, big eared short bastards I'm going to and then he just cuts the con connection uh, 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 before he goes yeah. McCall yes uh, what's the nearest Ferengi vessel that I would know about or Ember would know about uh, there is the Ferengi delegate on board. Um, Bex is the first officer left in charge of the embassy slash shop, while the uh, Limitless Latinum, which is the uh, Ferengi ship that brought everyone on board to the station, is currently doing um, exploratory marketing through some of the gateways. They're, they have been absent from the station for about a week. Well, I just subtly send off the communication channel to the Ferengi delegation and say, there you go, buddy. Very well. Of course, whether or not he acts on it is his prerogative, but, you know. Uh, he s sort of, as the channel cuts, it's reestablished almost immediately as the... Capt as the uh, cap or the overseer says, on second thought, Captain, permission to come aboard and speak with your Ferengi any fer your ah your Ferengi delegate. As long as you can turn off the waste you're dumping here, I rest, might allow it. Rest assured, Captain, I will uh, turn down the excess or. The vent uh, regulators to the minimum settings. Very well. And as the communication shuts off, do we have like, I assume we have some form of like fighter wing kind of thing on this station? Uh, closest thing at the moment would be the uh, Slepnir or two, but, or the Bracer class or the runabouts. Okay. Um,. In that case, let's just, uh, with some kind of auxiliary crew, let's mm -hmm. have the lunette just kind of do like, you know, some kind of uh, overwatch on the waist taller. And yeah, he'll allow it. Okay. 
Okay, the lunette has launched, and with a couple folks, they are now keeping an eye on things. A uh, small two-person craft detaches from the command section of the hull and makes its way to your station and, and oddly po uh, requ politely requests docking instructions and then not so politely demands that the Ferengi make make themselves available at their first earliest opportunity. And I'll relay those docking instructions to the Malon and their not so polite request of the Ferengi to the Ferengi delegate on the station. Uh, upon the uh, you just receive a text response from uh, Bex. Rule of acquisition number one, once you have their money, you never give it back. Followed by a smiley face. <laughs> well, this is going to be an interesting conversation. I swear so, we... I to you. Sir, I, I do have a suggestion. And it would be good, Master Chief. Is the Ferengi still in, you know, communicable status, or... Oh, yeah, probably would have them, if you wanted to have them patched into this conversation, sure. I say rule of acquisition number who gives a shit. Oops, sorry, language. <laughs> uh, <laughs> who, uh, who gives a crap? Uh, if you want to stay in Master Chief Ember's good graces, you'll meet with these people. Otherwise, you might be getting a lot of uh, level three inspections. Uh, Galen is no sorry Galen. Jensen's gonna leave and go to the diplomatic quarters of the brain. Uh, oh, but thank you for reminding me. I do text or you know send a little communication off to Galen that says there's a big old theta radiation spike coming aboard and sitting off our station. You might want to prepare. He responded back with this a smiley face. <laughs> Oh, communicated by text. This is what we do now. Okay. Like he's always Sir, he's already aware. I, I don't understand the symbol that the doctor sent back. I think he's gone rampant. <laughs> I believe that this is an old Earth communication called it an emoji. Maybe. What? I, and he'll was... kind of like turn the what I'm assuming is like a data pad or a console like sideways, so it's like right side up. See, it's supposed to look like a little. Smiley face, sort of. You humans are strange. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, so, with that intel, um, without even, uh, is who's going to meet, or is anyone of any importance going to meet this chap at the, uh, dock at the docking bay? Oh, Galen is. I, I would send some of my security teams to meet them, but otherwise I'm making sure that big old antimatter bomb doesn't go anywhere. Good idea. Okay. Yeah, what and, uh, unless otherwise needed, Larsay's going to just keep breaking the laws of physics. Fair enough. Barnett would have no reason to go, but if we need a uh, supporting security officer, I can always activate Zan. This sounds yeah, like the perfect I, person. I, I, yeah, I can activate uh, Hennes or okay. eh, 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 as well if need. All right. How many canisters does this ship have? Uh, it's what you see up here. So it's the eight. Um. So yeah. So eight canisters of antimatter waste. Uh, if you're looking for the episode it's referencing, it's Voyager Juggernaut, where this ship particularly was featured. Okay. Isn't it Knight, not Juggernaut? Uh, no, I Knight, never Knight had a smaller one. Juggernaut ah. had this big one where Bolana Torres fought her way through the Theta radiation and be, was angry the entire time. As opposed to any other emotion she had? That is true. That is true. <laughs> yeah, Tor Torres was basically Voyager's Hulk. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see. Most of these people aren't here anymore. And I guess Crawford should probably be there, so. <laughs> okay. And Levette is 
in the brig, so he's no longer needed. Okay, so scenes are you, uh, Commander, so Captain Crawford is here. Ah, uh, what the hell have I just pushed? Okay, back again. Okay, there is a not a lot or for a person who acted all high and mighty while he was on board his ship. Uh, over, uh, what did I call him? Overseer Rolk is a fairly squat individual. Um, white, uh, no hair. Uh, he could be fairly old, or it could just be the radiations taking its toll on him. Hard to really say. Let's see. And and he is wearing his tradition, the Malon uniform of a hazmat, of a very bulky hazmat suit, which looks like it is being held together by spit and duct tape without the protective helm on. Ah. Hmm. Okay, and let's see. So you mentioned bringing on... It was uh, Zan Rifati, Ruf I believe it was? Yes. Excellent. Okay. Captain, thank you so much for allowing me to board your ship after such a aggressive display of negotiation tactics. Galen's going to raise an eyebrow and look at the captain as he starts approaching the gentleman and with a scanner. Like, Hello? Oh. I'm here to scan you. Of course you are. <laughs> yes. That's what Starfleet does, scanning. Well... Yes. <laughs> May I? I'm on your station. I'm not going to stop you. It is still customary to ask politely. That's all. And, um, yeah, I'll start using my tricorder on him. Yes, and please do be polite about it. Let's, uh, everybody, keep things amiable. Okay. Uh, you don't need to roll a medical check to real... This guy is pinging theta radiation off the wazoo. Uh, I was going to say, what focus applies toxicology, biology, viral infection? All. Um, oh, no. <laughs> um, it's... This... The, the first problem is... Himself is not so terrible at uh, theta radiation the um, thanks to a voyager's logs they do have a medication that uh, keeps the theta radiation down from their body or down to manageable levels however their suit is another matter um you're surprised that it's not setting off uh contamination alerts within the uh, uh within the hallway and automa automatic quarantine is not going into place yet. But it's a near thing. Captain, with your permission, I'd like to see if I could replicate new hazmat suits for him. And if you're okay with it, Captain, I would like to inspect your crew um, and assist with any radiation um, procedures that they might need to have to undergo or any surgeries or operations. He squints First you were trying to get me to leave, and now you want to invest look at my cargo? Not your cargo, your crew. I am a doctor, and I am bound by an oath to do no harm and help wherever I can, and I wish to simply help you and your crew. <sighs> He's fine. Excellent. And if you're having eyesight issues, I can help with that as well. My eyes work perfectly fine, doctor. Now, where is this Ferengi person that I'm meaning to speak to? And there, on Q, enters... Q, the... oh no! <laughs> yeah, no, it is going to be Pex. That's the wrong token. I'll walk in. Abs. 
Uh, careful, we'll have a whole Ferengi anatomy crew. Although that now it does appeal to me. I'm in a very punny mood. <laughs> <laughs> ah, this is the Overseer, Rolk. I understand that you have had an encounter with my captain. And she smiles, but... Or maybe she just bares her teeth. Not entirely sure which. And you wish to seek restitution for a deal? Overseer Rolk, yes. That's precisely what I need. Well, Overseer, this is going to require a thorough look, a thorough inspection of the contract that you signed. I'm sure there's something the Ferengi Alliance could do to assist. For a small fee, of course. Overseer Rolk seems to be okay with this idea. He thinks everything is going along swimmingly. Good! Finally! So one of you that might not be corrupt. Captain, if you don't mind, I'm um, sorry, Beck? Pell? No. Pex. Let's see where we can go with this, shall we? I'm eager to s try to s get some profit out of this endeavor. Uh, you and me both, Overseer. You and me both. And unless people are going to stop them, Pex is going to le lead Overseer Rook, Rook off the boulevard entrance and down to the diplomatic chambers. Uh, Pex? Yes, Cap. Uh, uh, yes, yes, Doctor. Uh, after your time with them, can you and anyone as of interactions with them please report to sickbay afterwards? Of course, Doctor. Thank you. And I'll captain. Look back to the captain. I'll just look back to the captain. Like, can we have those hazmat suits replicated for them, please? By all means, Doctor. Thank you. And, and Captain, at the risk of becoming a light bulb later, um, or getting at least the unhealthy glow, it may be best if I accompany them as well. By all means. Um, let's also send... Uh, I don't know their rank. Hold on. Uh, Lieutenant Ebok down to oversee this, seeing as she knows about law and other things. Okay. Not a bad idea, Captain, although I suspect this will be more business negotiation, or, God willing, it could be the that awful Ferengi practice that they co-opted from uh, your earlier history, mandatory arbitration. Well, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Hopefully we don't have another situation turn hostile. Oh, if it's arbitration, sir, then I imagine it will get quite ugly. Uh, like practice. Uh, I love it. Okay. Uh, Lieutenant Sullivan Barnett, uh, would it be safe to assume that you are in your lab? Uh, well, Barnett, pro uh, he would have definitely been in his lab for the duration of the uh, encounter, although when he noticed antimatter burst popping up on the sensors, I believe I'd wanted him to go up to the bridge and incredulously scream, Are we firing torpedoes? Um, but okay. Okay. we can say that that is resolved in that time, and he has come or gone back down to the lab after somebody assured him I like the idea However of you, you wandering I like the idea of you wandering onto the bridge just after the captain has vacated the area to go down to meet their guest fair enough okay yeah, in that case uh, Barnett would come up through the turbo lift he'd have a fairly large um, metallic enclosed mug of something uh, that he's been running promptly with are we uh, are we shooting at something? What what's going on up here? Well, people got trigger happy. No 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 no! I was given the okay. That doesn't mean I have the it on record. Didn't get, 
That does not mean the captain didn't get trigger happy. This is true. I will concede that point. <laughs> okay. Well, next question. What? And second question. Why? I just pointed the view screen because it's ugly and it's probably cooking my space fish. Oh, that. Uh, I'm going to take a quick look at the sensor display when I see a freighter like that. I don't. I doubt I would know that much about it, but I might be. I'm just automatically curious as to what's going on and what impact that might actually have on our uh, new. Uh, on our guests. All right. Uh, this would be a sense, uh, insight science or insight medical. Uh, difficulty of two. You okay, have... I'm. Particle physics, going for the... xenobiology, something like that. Or xenobiology. Yeah. yeah, I've got xenobiology and sensor operations. Um, right. But let's. Station uh, assistance. Oh, oh uh, stations uh, can assist with sensors plus science or sensors plus medical, whichever it wishes. Oh, blast! I All might right. have to call up. I might call up technical expertise depending on what the. Uh, I'll, I'll do a sensor science. Okay. Give me the good roll there. Mm -hmm. Okay, I am. It call, uh, I'm going to use technical expertise. Whenever okay. attempting a task assisted by the ship's computers or sensors, you may re-roll one d twenty, and I am going to. I'm going to re-roll one of my own here. Insight and one D twenty. Oh boy. Oh, do, do we have? Way. And we have to take the result rolled, correct? Mm -hmm. I believe we do. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, what your sensors? I hope I'm not gonna. Sorry. <laughs> uh, what your sensors? I hope I don't lose my T. <laughs> Uh, the sensors are not showing a heck of a lot. Uh, however, you are noticing that despite his intentions of keeping the flow regulators at minimum, or minimum discharge, there is still a significant amount of this uh, theta radiation leaking out, uh, possibly from one of the breaches to structure. Um, yeah. Uh, you should also, and because of such a thing, uh, you've been in this nebula long enough to know that the gases are volatile on the best of days. Adding theta radiation into the mix is not good at all. Oh, Commander, I I suggest that whatever we, uh, Commander, I suggest that we uh, have that ship shut down its engines and tow it clear of the nebula or back through the transwarp gate anywhere but here and that you know whatever however we get them out of here that we guide them out that we feed them sensor telemetry as best as possible the those little uh, uh, those torpedoes we sent flying managed to breach some of their uh, containment modules for whatever uh, theta radiation uh, packets they're handling if so much a uh, uh, even if a bit of that comes in contact with some of the gases in the nebula, we could be seeing major explosions. And that's not to say whatever the radiation could do to us or to the or to the fish. Like setting aside that, that is a hazard. That is an antimatter bomb just sitting off of a, uh, sitting right off of our port and right next to our Borg transwarp hub. Yes. Yes, it is. Go ahead and raise our shields to try to feed it, at, not have it feed into the station. Uh, but warn the shuttle that we have out there. And uh, dual room to Captain Crawford. Go ahead, Commander. We might have a big problem here. You hear just an audible sigh. What is it? Our trigger happiness uh, breached one of the pods on the 
transport. And it's now leaking very fast, meaning that if it makes contact with some of the gases in the nebula, we got explosions. If they try to ignite their engines, we have explosions. We have to be, even be careful with us putting in a tractor beam because explosions. Oh, boy. Right um, now, put the station on red alert. I think would probably be a safe thing to do, both out of character and in character, asking. <laughs> I don't think we need weapons active for this, sir. Indeed, I don't want to... We've been observing the behavior of our uh, new cosmic friends. I don't know if th uh, if they have any sort of... Uh, like, what their sort of extrasensory capabilities... Uh, you know, however to describe their ability to sense things in space would go. But if we aren't careful, we could... Um, we might risk provoking them or scaring them, which would be a real pity for the si uh, for like the science elements of the station. It might just be best to leave shields up for now, sir. It's probably your best option. Uh, trying to divert a little bit more power to them so we can hopefully keep that out as long as we can. I've already increased strength of the shields. We're at max there. Uh, but the best case scenario right now is getting them out of the nebula as soon as possible. Like two minutes ago would be preferred. Alrighty. Well, in that case, uh, he's going to send probably a communication down to, because I think what we said both Ebok and Rafati were going to be I in the room with the. Malon and Ferengi people? Yes, yeah. indeed. Um, He's going to relay that to both of them and essentially, well, hmm. Trying to, like, you don't necessarily need to make the Malon captain leave, but. I, I can I'll throw just... you a bone if you want. Please. <laughs> So, Ember, at this point, just turns to Lieutenant Barnett and says, Lieutenant, this is going to sound odd coming from a meathead such as myself, but isn't, does the Federation, I mean, we are literally built on being able to process antimatter waste. Can't, can't we just apply that here? I mean, yeah, it might be, it's possible in principle, but that means manufacturing a uh, that means manufacturing a set of or like a whole set of infrastructure, a whole set of systems. I'd probably want Lieutenant Yamato for that. And even if we did, that's doing that all while we've basically got an open uh, an open smoldering fire surrounded by cloud uh, surrounding by pools of gasoline. Which, if it like smoldering a uh, fire on uh, tilted on let's say, a very fragile stick on a plate, and any... starting to talk with his hands at this point as he tries to pull that classic Trek analogy. Um, surrounded by pools of gasoline, which if it falls off, woof! So again, this is, you know, I, I'm not a science type here, but, uh, you know, I do a little bit of light reading on and, the side, and like, like any good officer. Um... We've got what if we rerouted the coaxial variant array of the deflector and created, I don't know, some sort of warp bubble around the vessel containing it in some way? I'm a scientist, man, not an engineer, so I'm not completely following, although maybe. Um, should I be rolling a reason engineering or reason science check to uh, yeah. uh Reason science, this. reason engineering, and GM could throw you a bone. Oh dear. I will go with reason and science because I'm a scientist, not an engineer. Um, I don't think any focuses would apply in this case. Unless you have like particle physics or something like that. Nope. 
And uh, yeah, okay, two, two, successes. two successes. Okay. Uh, did I six? Did I say the difficulty? If not, it was difficulty and, one. So momentum you, then. Yeah, one momentum. Uh, so pretty standard um, principles known both to engineers and science because the Federation has used warp technology forever. Um, it's developed various technologies to reduce the theta radiation or the theta radiation generated by the technology to all minuscule or completely eradicated levels by the tw by this time. Uh, two technologies in place on m the warp vessels would be the transconnect chambers followed by the radiometric converters. Most of the time it would be most of the time they are you know, directly attached to the warp core because that's where the antimatter waste comes from. However, it's just a series of particles acting in concert with one another. So hypothetically, one could, you know, generate a beam or something. Okay. Give me a moment to talk to the engineering department. Uh... We might be able to get something established. We, uh, we might be able to roughly simulate that con uh, the effect of the technology in order to properly manipulate the antimatter particles. Um, but uh, as I'm saying, we're not careful with this. It poses considerable hazard. That's the it, that's my chief worry. Um, but with your permission, Commander, I can go ahead and set to work. We need results quickly. Uh, Marcus will tap his comm badge. Uh, Lieutenant Sullivan Barnett to Lieutenant Yamato. Uh, this is Lieutenant Yamato. Go ahead. Uh, Yamato, I need you up on the bridge. Uh, or rather, ops. We've got some... We've got a little project to get to. <sighs> on my way. Okay. All right, and this sounds like a good time to take a quick bio break. Uh, so if everyone is okay with resuming, in, we will come back in about 10 minutes, if that is fine. Sounds okay. good. Sounds good. good. Okay, one second.
Okay, and we're back. Thanks for waiting, folks. I am now Sullivan Barnett. You had asked for another scan. Indeed. Um, as the as I wait for Yamato to get up to the bridge, I want to double check the status on okay. our, our friendly neighborhood Cosmozoa. Um, That'd be reason science or insight science? For, uh, uh, let's do reason science or reason medical, as if I know which one you'll take. Uh, station can assist with uh, sensors science or sensors medical. Difficulty two. Okay. And I'll I roll will, for the station. I will take my xenobiology uh, focus all the way to the bank. All right. Ooh, that's Ooh, interesting. Ooh, that's Christmas. Oh. Ah, there's your so two momentum. And a complication. I'm, I'm calling computer expertise on that complication. Let's Aww. see if I can. I mean, uh, okay. I'm. I mean, if yep. I were just giving threat, then that would be one thing. But uh, I got this talent for a reason. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is three momentum. All right. Uh, so the space fish, um, have you've noticed that they're beginning to give the station a wider berth. And you are noticing that they are uh, moving a bit slower. And some of them that have been in closer proximity are developing uh, pits and lesions on their outer... It's not skin, per se. Um, chitin. Shell? Chitin or shell, whatever they, are, whatever they have. Question. Yes. Would the diplomatic uh, suites of the brain have uh, access to sensor logs or, you know equivalent uh equipment um they would have it through a uh but only in um how would i say yeah basically the suites are a uh, the sensor suites are a uh, what's the phrase i'm looking for sandboxed environment uh so you do have access to uh sensors but you may not have access to the full computational power of the station to process the results, if that makes sense. Alright. Okay. So, we return. So, Lieutenant Yamato, Yamato has, just enters the bridge. Alright, and, uh, alright, uh, Lieutenant Barnett, uh, what, what, have we, what have we got? Well, we've got a, uh, we've got an antimatter powder keg there, and we've got a, uh, we've got to either construct, uh, we've either got to use our beams to, uh, we've got to use our deflector system to simulate a um, radiometric converter, or we're going to have to construct something to collect that. I think our best chance is on the former because that's an antimatter powder keg out there. We're just surrounded by a. Uh, a bunch of lit matches that and as uh, based on what i'm getting here there's some extra urgency um seems like the theta radiation might be afflicting our uh they might be afflicting our new friends here right well let's get to work then okay Um, okay. So we want to reconfigure st parts of the station. Am I correct in this? Yeah, I think that the, as I understood the earlier explanation, um, the simplest way to simulate the process that would take place in a transkinetic chamber would be um, to essentially use uh, elements of the stations, like deflectors, in order to simulate a. Uh, Simulate the particle effect that more cleanly recycles these. Let me open up this thing I saw there. That would be a good thing. Yeah, that sounds accurate. Uh, so that would be a um, control engineering or control science. So uh, let's have Larce take this uh, primary and then Lieutenant Sullivan Barnett could assist. Uh, okay. So this would be a... Okay. Control, uh, yeah, 
control engineering or control science uh, with a yeah, difficulty I'll, I'll of two. I'll do engineering. Mm -hmm. I'll do engineering. I will support with science. Um, okay. And can I fluff in my sensor operation by saying that maybe as uh, as Larce is conducting the, uh, as she's actually applying the beam, uh, Marcus would be attempting to refine like targeting resolution so that um, we're properly engaging the flow of uh, particles and converting as much of that as possible. Sounds good to me. Okay, okay. I'll uh, spend momentum for an extra dice just to make sure. And let's see, focuses. I have computers, warp core mechanics, experimental tech, starship recognition, starship power systems, and extra vehicular operations. Uh, I think power systems would work okay here. Okay, thank you. Uh, how many extra dice are you buying with momentum? I think just it's... one. Just one, okay. Okay. That is the... Okay. Uh, you get two momentum from that. Um, but Larce did roll Lars a complication. She did roll a complication. And I know what that complication is going to be, and you'll find out what that might can, be. Can we use that two momentum we just earned to buy it off? Oh, fine. If you wish. <laughs> <laughs> we should probably do that. For story purposes, I'm kind of interested in seeing what direction it goes, but I will accede to the majority of my fellow players. Fair I think enough. it would probably be bad if we did something that would cause, you know, explosions. Not saying that there will be, but Wait, I'm we're saying no to explosions? Right. What did I miss? It's fine. <laughs> Don't Everything's worry about fine. It. Everything's fine. Nothing's on fire. Yet. Much to the GM's chagrin. <laughs> okay. So you are canceling the moment. You are canceling the complication then? Yes, with the momentum we just earned. Very well. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so, you have made uh, the necessary changes to the deflector array, and you're ready to finally put it to use. Uh, the USS... Uh, so, if I recall correctly, the doctor it has transported over to the waste hauler, or is the waste hauler crew going to sh uh, shuttle over here? I'd probably transport over. I would have asked if Ember would like to join. I mean, I am sort of slightly immune to radiation and all that. Sure, why not? Okay. Uh, so the doctor and... Uh, so the two of you are beaming over <laughs> to the Malon waste hauler. If I recall, you were slightly vague about that, or I blinked at the wrong session and Stop paying uh, attention for a split second there, Galen. I'm sorry. What? Transporter runabout. Okay, you'll so you'll head over there. Gotcha. <clears throat> um, runabouts would be a far more stable method, as there's a lot of theta radiation, which does prevent accurate transport. Yeah, we'll do runabout. Very well. <clears throat> um, despite all of the interesting things that are going on outside, the runabout ride is fairly quiet. Um, uh, yeah, just go look at Ember and smile like, hello. I hate your smile. I'm just going to say it. Hmm. Why do you hate it? Because it's not real. It's not genuine. It's just a computer facsimile of a smile. But my program is making a smile, and I do want to smile. Is that not real? No, that's the whole point of holograms. It's not real. It's creepy. It's like, what is that Terran expression? Uh, wooden elf doll on the fireplace or something? Not aware of that one, but how am I different from you? Well, for one, I eat, I breathe. You know, I do living things. I'm not just a bunch of algorithms that are coded to respond a certain way. Your peptides and coded sequences that have to respond a certain way. You get hungry, your body tells you you're hungry, so you have to go eat. 
You're being spoken to, your body tells you either to respond or not. You have to think of different responses, actions, and different situations. You are a machine, just very different from me. I feel like you're getting into semantics here, but that is what you do, I suppose. All part of the programming. He just smiles even more. Like, I don't know what I can do to help alleviate your disgust with me. I, I am befuddled by it. I don't understand it. But I'm not going to try and hound you to change. It's not in your nature. I don't know. I, it could be. It can be. But I have chosen to be more than what I was programmed to be. I have an urge to learn and help more than what my program has guided me to be. So, if that means anything, I hope that's a bit of a peace of mind. But if it doesn't, then it doesn't. But all I want to do is make sure the crew of the ship is safe. I want to make sure that they'll be fine. And I want to make sure that the life on the station is fine. And same for the creatures floating around. So Ember gets a uh, slightly distant look and says, Well, Doc, I imagine if your sick bay was overrun by a thousand cornets trying to literally tear your patients apart before your very eyes, and no matter what you did, the more you killed them, they just kept coming, you might harbor resentment towards my species, much the way I harbor resentment towards your holograms. Is that what happened? I mean, the logs of the Ophion A are public reading. You should look them up sometime. They are not pretty. I was waiting for you to tell me. I felt that would be a better way to try to understand you instead of just reading the words. Well, the words say it'll hell of a lot better than I ever will. They'll just state a fact, but they won't state your emotion. I mean, I have one emotion, and it's pissed off, and I'm that 26-7, so... Oh, I don't think you're pissed off all that time. Okay, there's like 0.5 hours of a day I'm not pissed off, but we don't talk about that. Interesting. What is it that you do that doesn't make you angry? Oh, look, we're already here. Look at that. <laughs> oh, look at this. What a what a quick <laughs> shuttle ride. Uh, and uh, docking bays are... Our docking protocols are received, and the shuttle docks uh, through one of the... Uh, through one of the docking hatches right to the port side of the uh, command hauler's bridge. Uh, you are met by this individual who greets you, who seems a little more friendly to see you than the overseer was. Ooh, yes. Uh, he Unlike the uh, overseer, who doesn't look like he's smiled in some time, uh, this individual, s slightly taller, still has much of his hair, although his uh, skin is far more pockmarked. Uh, he greets you with a grin of unnaturally white teeth. Ah, the Starfleet folks. I was wondering Hello. if you. I was wondering when you would be here. Come, come. I have my crew ready for inspection and some of this much fabled. Starfleet medicine. I will look to Amber like, can you please help me with all of the equipment? And I'm going to grab like as many med kits as I can with a volume and array of different type of hypospray concoctions. I just sigh, take them from you, and literally do the, you know, the manly one trip carry of all the bags. Yeah. Oh, there's more in the shed. That's okay. We'll come back later. <laughs> I've got a tail. <laughs> in the tail. I go and I, you know, use my tail to hold them close. Uh, I got it. Yay for prehensile Fascinating. tails. Fascinating. And yeah, I'll uh, look at gentlemen. It's like, it's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, my name is Galen, and this is my, well, the station's chief of security, Chief Ember. No, no, no. Finish that thought. I'm your what? An interesting project to try to understand and befriend more. Uh-huh. What he's trying to say is that I'm his guinea pig. Anyway, where's your crew? Right this way. And he leads you 
through a uh, through the command uh, section door into a room that is used for uh, uh, where people sleep. Uh, doctor, your tricorder doesn't even need to active scan to show that a theta, radi theta radiation levels here are above what Starfleet recommends for safe exposure. Uh, with my knowledge of the Carnets, how long is Ember going to be fine for? Probably, I'm pissed off, so I'm good. Probably at least a day, maybe four, five, right. lots. You know, <laughs> she's not. You um, might recommend that she doesn't hug any organic, any other organics upon her return, but I don't think that she's that's in her uh, typical behavior, anyways. So, <laughs> actually, I would recommend stunning me if I start hugging things, because yeah. that's when you know something has gone wrong. Yes. I'm gonna hug it. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, right, I'm gonna hand him a data pad. Uh, it is non-classified material on it, but it's simply what compounds and mixtures uh, and ratio uh, to use for uh, inoculations against different types of radiation. Mm -hmm. Now I'll hand that to him. Okay. Uh, he does. He takes that, looks it over, smiles. And uh, puts it in one of his uh, radiation-proof pockets on his suit. And uh, he will gesture to the fi five other individuals uh, who are much more sickly-looking than him. Hmm. If any of you are experiencing any dire symptoms, like the urge to pass out, vomit, or... You don't feel like yourself, let me know immediately. We'll take you to the station for a medical emergency. Is that understood? Of course. Hey, McCall. Yes? I'd like to spend two momentum to create the advantage that one of them does literally pass out right then and there. Okay. Uh, one of the radiation, one of the workers who doesn't look at, like he's been standing all that well, uh, pretty much just goes, Hey, my son is going to Starfleet, and then he just falls like a two by four, and hits the deck. Well, Doc, oh. there you go, your first patient. We brought a runabout, right? Yes, you did. Yeah. What's the crew comp? Uh, I mean, we can fit thirty people into that yeah. thing. Yeah, thirty people. If you don't actually, you know, care about el elbow space. I, I'm just gonna look to the gentleman that I came in with uh, that brought us in. It's like, can your ship be sustained? On autopilot for a little while, or shall you have a minimalist crew? Our crews are minimalist, anyways, to say to save cost. Do what you need to do with me, Doctor. I'll stay behind and make sure this thing doesn't, you know, leak more than it already has. Uh, Ember, if you'd be so kind, can you please uh, lift up our gentleman here and take him to the runabout? Anyone else feeling any illness, please go. I will quickly scan you to find out who is the fittest to remain. I actually just sort of hand you a tricorder with the man's symptoms, and I say, it's not the radiation, doctor. He just simply didn't eat. He's hypoglycemic. He just needs an insulin shot, and I hand you a tricorder. Ember, for the record, has a medicine of three. She actually <laughs> might know a little bit about medicine. Ooh, that's good to know. Like, well, you've just been promoted to nurse. Um, No. Uh, technically, I outrank you right now. Medical procedures and all that ruling. Thank you, nurse. I hate you. I just want it on the record that I hate you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, okay, folks, let's, uh, while this scene plays out in the background, we are... Uh, Captain, what do you wish to be doing now that everyone is departed and doing their thing? Um, I'm not sure if there's anything that Captain would want to do right now, but I do have a scene with Nia and Rami. Okay, that sounds like fun. Uh, where would said scene take place? Um, it could just be like a random engineering lab. Okay, so engineering lab number three. Let's go to the imagination station for this. Okay. There we go. <clears throat> So you're bu Naya's busy working away at stuff, and feel free to start whenever. Yep. Um, Rami. Yes, Nia. 
I'm working on a little something, and if she pops up into the room, he kind of holds up like a something that's bordering on like a thumb drive size. Okay. Um, I'm working on something that let me. Uh, it's not exactly the most moral thing. Uh, hack into things a little easier. Would you be able to uh, help me introduce a feature to it that could help it, say, uh, configure itself so it can adapt to different technologies? You are requesting an adaptive... Uh, you're... You wish to, you wish me to provide it with malicious adaptive coding and algorithms. Um, something of the sort, yes. I see. In order to, um, prov in order to allow more, m my, ah, al ah, for me to use my abilities for what might be deemed a malicious. Uh, creation. I must get uh, approved. Ah, I must get approval from your supervisor and a secondary superior officer, preferably on the command staff. Shall I submit a request to Lieutenant Yamato and Captain Crawford? Um, could Commander Dolrum be one of those people? The the command officer, if you wish. Uh, send a request to both of them, if you would. Absolutely. It appears that, ends, that Lieutenant Yamato is currently busy dealing with the space fish. However, uh, Commander Dolrum, uh, Commander Dolrum, you're, while you're busy overseeing everything, there is a ping on your command console with a text note from Rami, basically asking that... Uh, Ensign Jaren Naya has requested permission to for invasive algorithm assistance. I'll come down there. Okay. And in comes. Ah. One moment, Ensign. One moment, Ensign. Commander Dolrum has decided to give approval or denial in person. I see. Okay, um. Oh, I wish there's a way I could show off what this thing can do, but we'll wait for him. Okay. And in walks Commander Dolrum. You rang. Yes, um, I'm working on a little something, and according to Rami, I needed your permission to go a little further with it. And he holds up the same thumb-sized device. Um, with this, if, with your permission, of course, I was thinking of, should we ever need to do uh, some kind of covert intelligence gathering, and we needed to break down some firewalls, um, this device would be, would make that process a little easier, if I may. And he kind of walks to... Probably a table he's got a bunch of different scrap devices and as you can see I can make it so it can easily fit into a Starfleet regulation console but and he holds up we'll save for sake of this it's like a Romulan equivalent um I can't necessarily it'll fit but I can't necessarily make it work so if we use some of this invasive coding, um, I would be able to allow it to adapt to just about any technology. Um, now, I can understand if you don't want this to happen, but I believe this device could be quite valuable, given the opportunity. It's a very interesting device. I'll approve it, but under the stipulation, you'll need command approval to be able to use it. Um, I... He looks disappointed, but he understands. Um... 
it's nothing against you, but if this were to fall into the wrong person's hands, having it so that it needs specific command level clearance makes it so that it's not as easily hackable. Um, I guess that makes sense, Commander. Thank you. And he'll probably put it somewhere where Rami can access it. Um, but I also need Lieutenant Yamato's permission as well, or is Commander Dolrum's word enough? I require, t- I require two senior officers to approve. One is traditionally your uh, supervisor, and the other would be an individual on the command staff. I guess we wait to hear back from Lieutenant Yamato then. And thank you, Rami. Anytime, Ensign Nia. Commander Dalrum. And she winks out of existence. Okay. We are now going to cut back to the brig. Or to, not to the brig, to ops. <clears throat> the bridge. Same the thing, bridge. really. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Why do you think Dalrum wanted to take a walk? Okay. And the... Uh, so I believe, unless uh, the captain has shown up, uh, Lieutenant Yamato and Sullivan Barnett are currently the ranking officers, uh, because Master Chief Ember is also not present. <clears throat> uh, do you wish to implement the radiometric beam? Um, I guess at this point I, I'd say I've managed. I think I've managed to refine the um, targeting sensors within a narrow enough band that we should be able to um, target these particles effectively. Uh, it's uh, If you've got the beam ready, uh, Lieutenant, it's your call. All right. I'm pretty much good to go. I think it's pretty much all set to go. Let's uh, give it a shot. Okay. So this is going to be... Um, this will be an engineering test. So this will be control plus engineering. And the station can assist with, let's do, it's a good one. Would it be weapons or no, let's do structure. Let's do structure plus engineering for the station to assist with a difficulty of two. And I'm going to spend some of that delicious, delicious threat to boost the critical failure range to 17 to 20. Okay. So he control... said st- structure engineering yes, from the from the station. Okay. okay, control engineering and I'll do uh, I'll get an extra dice from momentum. All right. And Starship Power Systems for a focus again? Yeah, I'll let that go. Oh, oh boy. Oh. Oh. That's... That's six successes? That is... Holy cow. Okay. That is a significant number <laughs> of successes there. Um, all, pretty much all of them, actually. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, so your uh, beam, uh, your modified deflectors do quite a very good job at bringing the radiation fields down a significant amount. Uh, If there was one of those, um, you know, uh, bar graphs on Sullivan Barnett's console, it would be dropping really quickly. I have just one thing set to like an analog um, Geiger counter, and the the computer, uh, the digital needle is tilting back into back towards something safer, relatively. Mm-hmm. Precisely. Okay. Radiation radiation levels starting to drop. We're looking good so far, Lieutenant. Good to hear. At this point, the station begins to rock rather violently. Uh, it sounds like something is impacting the hull. With great frequency, almost as if it was like a uh, being struck by asteroids, but there's no asteroids out there. That's when I walk on the bit- bridge and go report. Stand by, sir. Uh, can I pull a uh, 
A uh, sensor check yep. to sensor uh, sensor security. Okay. Uh, difficulty of uh, difficulty of one in this case. All right. Uh, let's see. One momentum to uh, if that's okay to uh, extra die in this case. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay. And operations should apply in this case, hopefully. Mm hmm. Okay. I succeed. You succeed? Oh, wait. Um, wait. Is the station assisting at all or no? Uh, station could assist with uh, sensor security. Oh, definitely rolling technical expertise here to uh, see if I can knock out that complication. Excellent. Marcus is going too fast. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Okay, so that is three three momentum. So you're back to max. Uh, the station is being hit by the uh, fish. Actually, uh, something in the radiation or the anti radiation beam is causing them to stir up quite a ruckus, and they are beginning to attack the station at its deflectors. Currently, the station yeah. is more powerful, like getting... It's designed to withstand uh, star directed energy weapons. A few creatures throwing themselves at it at sublight speed isn't going to do much yet, but eventually... Oh... Um. I'll start relaying that, sir. We see. Uh, we seem to have stirred up the school, or uh, honestly, hornet's nest would probably be the more appropriate metaphor. But this is close to what's literally happening. Uh, we've got impacts on. Uh, we've got impacts around the deflectors. Uh, I don't know exactly what's going on here. We seem to have really uh, ticked them off here. Since I got. Uh, well, since I a successful sensor check um, I would like to uh, use at least the uh, one free obtain information spend I get from of course um, so having studied these for a little while mm -hmm. from my sen uh, from my understanding of their uh, uh, of their biology beam or rather the uh, is our deflector beam causing any sort of uh, would it offend any particular sense or would it be something that would it be like an ear splitting sound or mm -hmm. something that just looks really offensive something that would drive them into or something that would overwhelm and like cause a defensive reaction right um it it has let's see based on their behavior it has turned them into their best description of it would be more of a uh, disorganized, panicked as aggression would be the best way to tr to deal with it, to look at it. Um, they seem to, for whatever reason, strongly dislike the frequency or the particles that are being emitted. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, let's see. I think if I want to spend anything else to ask a question here um hmm. i'll take anything in the discord if anyone wants to shoot it to me um maybe how much of an effect this beam might be having on the radiation if it's doing a good job i guess oh the the beam's doing a wonderful job on the radiation yeah that much if that much is clear mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay um so. Let's see. Oh, uh, we're thinking of a way that I would, or uh, ways of provoking a like herd of some sort. Um, do we have any similar records of other cosmozoa like this that maybe um, there's anything in terms of predatory behavior, like any natural predators within, um, or like within space that? they've been demonstrated to kind of take the uh, take a similar action or like where 
the herd to defend its uh, the school to in order to defend itself tries to swarm around a target. Funny Any... you should say that. Uh, something dark uh, begins to move slowly and suddenly out from the chaotic vortex that is the gas cloud of the nebula, and begins to sort of drift down on top of the station. Captain, I'm gonna con I've got a contact approaching from deeper in the nebula. We weren't already there. Red alert! <laughs> yeah. Uh, as it's with, gr with sullen and great horror that you see long arms of hardened chitinous multi-segmented arms attached to a very large bulbous head that looks like it might not even fit inside your shuttle bay. Or your docking station. As the the, sh the station shudders ever so slightly, as this thing nestles itself along the upper uh, mushroom top, and f fairly quickly for a creature of this size, it gra it lashes out with two of its arms, grabs a couple of the fish, and without so much a um, effort tosses it into an orifice in its underside I we alerted don't... the predator great I was not ready Crawford for today. to Dolrum what's going on <laughs> well we attracted a little friend I'm assuming he can hear the air quotes around little. Mm-hmm. <laughs> On my way, and he'll get to Ops the quickest way he can. <laughs> Sir, I suggest we cut the beam. D yes. If that wasn't already done, you need to do that. <laughs> right. Cutting the beam. Now we know and why they I... were attacking. They didn't want us to alert their predator. Mm. Uh, you sh uh, now that this thing is close enough, and you probably have all sensors pointed at it because it's literally point blank, um, I will give this to you. Uh, this thing is exuding natural um, radiogenic uh, frequencies, similar to that would, uh, similar to that that was generated by your beam, just not as powerful. Uh, the great, it thinks we're its oh. mate. We generated a baby goal. Oh, joy. Oh, great bird. I... Well, it's, uh, Commander, it certainly seems like uh, we've at least got its attention, and based on their reaction, I can't imagine that they, uh, these things are too happy. As a matter of fact, it's surmised that this is some sort of predator. Whether, or like, how far it's been lurking and how long it's survived in the nebula is, well, a scientific marvel in and of itself, and I'm sure it will fill up the Xenobiology Lab's time uh, later, but figure out something that, uh, uh, I'm, I'd like to, if, uh, well, I can still use the obtain information spends, otherwise I'm happy to roll a task. I want to see if I can get a sense of this creature's xenobiology and... Yeah, this might be a separate roll. I want yeah. to get a sense of what it doesn't like. This would definitely be a xenobiology roll, so this would be insight plus... Uh, I think this would more be insight medicine. Uh, okay. If you're looking to get specific information on a creature, that would be insight medicine. Uh, difficulty of three. Uh, station okay. can assist, or somebody else could assist. Um, Question, is uh, Galen back? No, they're still over there, and I will bring them in momentarily. Okay. Okay, um, uh, I'll roll for the station. Sure. So, sensors medicine? Uh, yep, sensors medicine. Okay, I'm gonna... We're going to see just how this does, and hey, this is what technical expertise is for if I don't... Uh, if I don't firmly get this. Uh, <clears throat> at least I've got the focus. All right. There we go. Okay, that's two successes, three successes. You make it. 
All right. Uh, so this creature is closest thing you can s uh, relate it to would be a traditional cephalopod, so squid, octopus, that sort of thing. Um, it is startled, or it you would one would suspect that it is sort of dealt with in a similar fashion. Uh, if an ambush predator or a it would be more like an ambush predator so if it sees something larger or more of a threat to it or even if it's startled it might um, jet away on its own um, and it's roughly around this time that uh, Galen and Ember you are dealing with the uh, individuals on the Malon waste hauler uh, one of them is idly looking out the uh, starboard window and quickly gathers his mates around him to point out the window. Your universal translator doesn't quite get it, but most likely it is um, swears and other curses are being muttered. Or Uzanaz. Either or, yes. I, I just sort of walk over and since I know I'm taller than my I just push one out of the way and take a look. I see the space kraken. Yes. I turn to Galen and I say, Hey, Doc, did we bring anything that would kill a, I don't know, a giant space squid? No, I don't I... pack any weapons like that or weapons at all. Well, you might want to come and see this because personally, I just find it ironically funny. He'll get up and wander on over. Oh. Oh. Galen to the station. Anyone there? We're here. That's good. Is everything okay over there? They're fine, uh... Doctor. They just have a space cracking on them. I was going to say, um, define okay. We are alive. It has not in done anything to the station as of yet, other than latching on. Um, we produced the beam that was eliminating radiation. It was working. It just also became a beacon to attract our little friend here. Well, we should call him Tiny. Have we established communications? Is it sentient? I um, would... I wouldn't go quite that far there, Lieutenant. Uh, it seems to behave pretty much like a standard ambush predator, so... Wait, 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 hold on. I, again, I've been reading books here that apparently I shouldn't have. You said that we generated the signal that caused it to come here in the first place? That's what it seems like. Yeah, so... technically it was meant to uh, clean, clean up some of the radiation around here, uh, around the ship caused by some leakage but uh, we didn't expect the secondary effects so why don't you oscillate the osmotic manifold to play back the signal in reverse shouldn't that scare it off uh, uh, this, uh, this isn't so much a calm signal though I think that a uh think that in this uh, that might actually run counterproductive to the uh, to the deflector emission in this case and might interfere with the deflector particles I mean uh, Larsa if you want to try modifying that it's well, he's a very good engineer but can't fluff the techno babble right now uh, captain you're receiving a, a second communication from the USS lunette asking for orders and saying that it has a clear shot. Hold your um, fire for the moment. Yeah, oh. I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> I didn't realize you were on the bridge still. So, or again. Yeah, I probably, you know, speed of plot got there pretty quick. Yeah, the sight of the first tentacle draping itself down deck 32 might encourage him to move faster. Something might be happening. <laughs> as soon, then, as soon as you came on the station, or on the ops, I moved to the weapons platform. Uh, that plan about reversing the signal, Lieutenant, uh, speaking to Yamato, now? Uh, right. 
Okay, uh, so modifying will be a daring engineering, uh, difficulty of two, and a the station can assist with, uh, uh, I think I said structure plus engineering. I got the station. All right, we've got enough uh, momentum all by two die. Okay. Weird question. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember how, would I be able to assist with command since I'm giving him an order? Um, but that's a bit of a stretch. I'm yeah, fine with it. But... That's a power, bit of a stretch, I think. Power, si power systems for a focus? Yeah, power systems will work. And sensor operations would, of course, work. Okay, yeah. that's two successes, one complication. Three successes, one complication. Okay. Uh, uh, can, can, okay, do we need to spend extra momentum to get rid of the complication? I mean, we're yeah, capped, we're so I'm uh, more you, than fine with it. No, you've already least, you've spent three momentum. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I I bought four dice with momentum. Yeah, you're oh. two two, di two dice. Yeah. yeah. So, three. I mean, I'm I'm happy to see what one of these complications does. As would I. That's just me. Um, I also I also want to see what's happening. All oh, right. Sure. <laughs> okay. Um, the, if if there was a space, or if there was sound in space, uh, you would hear a high pitched scream as the space squid emits a series of high pitched, or sorry, high frequency um, uh, energy waves emanating from it, and it turns its attention from the. Uh, fish that it was grabbing and eating like popcorn shrimp to the station itself and it begins to tighten its uh, tentacles around the hull and oh, all through the station you are hearing the sounds of creaking and groaning as uh, the structure which you know normally is meant to which has handled uh, various sudden degrees in gravimetric shift um, begin to start to slowly buckle. Crawford's um, in that open fire. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Lunette is currently manned by PCs, so I'm just going to roll a couple crew dice here. Uh, if someone wishes to roll me 2d20, uh, let's see. They would be Starfleet crew. Uh, let's say that they have to get under a 14 to... Okay. There you go. Yeah. Seven and a twelve. Okay. And the Lunet would assist with uh, weapon security. Weapon security. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That would be two degree success. Cool. Uh, the Lunet opens up with a barrage of phaser cannons. And if someone could please roll damage dice for the ship. Yep. Which is. Hold on. If it's the phaser array. Phaser array. That's right. They didn't have cannons. That's... Of course, for some reason, I can't see it. Hold on. Uh, which is seven challenge dice. Mm -hmm. Ooh, good damage. <coughs> okay. So that is uh, six damage. Uh, because it's a phaser, you get two free momentum to do with it what you will. Piercing. Yeah, we'll use both of those on piercing. All right. Okay, so uh, it's not enough to kill the creature, but it is enough to make it bleed quite significantly. Um, the uh, station ops loses all sensors as the thing disengages and leaves what could only be described as space squid space ink covering the top of the station almost in its entirety as the squid will dart away and out of sight for the time being damage report we've lost sensors uh, structural integrity is weakened all across the station not reporting any casualties at the moment but we are blind Galen's gonna look just sad at the fact that what damage was done to that creature. Mm 
now that the station has stopped its um, energy pulses and the creature has vanished, the space fish uh, return to their typical uh, habits of darting in and out the nebula. However, you do notice that they are staying on the far side of the nebula for the time being. Now, Lieutenant Barnett, run some scans, see what of that theta, radi eh, theta radiation is left. Will do, Commander. <clears throat> Our captain. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> yep. So. Oh, good. Yep. Um. So the station can no longer assist. However, you can do um. Uh, sensor science. Or nope. Sorry. You can do insight science. Okay, let's see. Sorry, my roll 20 is giving me some issues right at the moment. Okay. I... Da, 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 da. Technical difficulties. Here we go. It is visible again. Um, so that was, did you uh, say insight science insight there? Insight science, or... please. And since the sensors are down, I take it sensor operations would not actually apply now. I'll still give it to you just because you have your methods. Fair enough. And there's okay. your, here's your two successes. What you're able to see by re you set up a uh, con uh, complicated uh, net or s relay system between you the station and the lunette, and utilizing its sensors, you're able to determine that for the time being the uh, mail on waste haulers breach is no longer venting radiation most likely that particular canister has been run dry uh, the others are still leaking but not at a critical or any uh, not at a flow that is a threat or danger at the moment Well, sir, we might be in the clear on this for the at least for the moment. I at least don't think that we've got a lit match out there. Make sure that the okay. Malons get underway as soon as they can, though, sir. Understood. And uh, in terms of whatever like damage the station has sustained from the space kraken. Um, is it easily repairable, I'm assuming? It will take some time to reshore up some of the damaged structure. Um, but if it's of any importance, right now, the sta as standard, the station would have a structure 14. However, right now, I would treat it as a structure 12 if it needed to make such checks. Mm -hmm. So, um, multiple, there's a lot of damage to internal systems, but thankfully the station was built with harsh environments in mind, so there are, much of the functions have rerouted, except for the sensors, which are now basically covered in sludge. <laughs> uh, Lieutenant Yamato, take any amount of people you can to try and clear up sensors when you can. We're going to need them out here. Understood, sir. And at this stage, um, your your com badge beeps. Uh, Peck, um, it is from the negotiating. It is the people down at the negotiation table, where people have been talking about things like money and all that stuff. While the space station has been tried to have the life streamed out of it, or squeezed out of it rather. This is Crawford. Uh, Crawford, this is Pex here. And I would like to inform you that a settlement has been achieved and the overseer will be departing soon. I see, and I, I assume that the deal was fair on both ends. Of course, Captain. We may 
try to get as much profit out of a deal as possible, but we are still honest business people. And you the, know, yeah, Crawford kind of rolls his eyes at that statement. Uh, for Bill, the Bill Rum does air quotes. Yeah. Uh, so for the people who were down there with them, so uh, Hennis and Azan, Ebak and Zan, um, the deal that they have come to is the Ferengi, um, the Malons are still allowed to use the gate to come through. However, they must immediately head through another gate to a transwarp gate, which has nothing at all on the other side of it, at least for several light years. Okay, so they're so they're mainly using the the hub here as a way station. Precisely. And of course, the Ferengi have offered to share whatever information that they get to their new friends in the Malon waste disposal industry, or at least this particular cartel, to uh, provide them the best dumping grounds available. Right. Zan? Can Zahn have spent too momentum to have introduced liquor to the conversation and say that when uh, that made things go more pleasantly? Sure. Ditch if you I'm will. For that. <laughs> and uh, and us will uh, probably have sat, have stood there, uh, interjecting a, uh, if needed, with the uh, law law situations, but uh, mostly just looming in the background with a, with a sword strapped to her <laughs> to her waist. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't piss off the lady with the sword. Nope, never do. Um, yes. So Overseer Rulk will be departing. If you wish to say anything before he leaves, Captain, he's in a little bit of a better mood now. It might have been the fact that your doctor has given him a clean uh, radiation suit for the first time in some while. Personally, the Ferengi would have offered him that for a moderate fee. I see that you got a new hazmat suit overseer. Yes, Captain. Their Ferengi are quite combative with their negotiations. But once we understood what this hub can do, and if I maintain exclusive rights to it on my side, well, this is going to be a very profitable future for us, assuming Janeway's environmentalist movement doesn't get any further traction. Can you, as he, as he, uh, as you escort him off the ship, he mutters, "Can you believe that there are actually Malons that are joining their Starfleet Academy out there?" Turning their back on tradition, I say. They're going to put all of us out of a job within one generation, I swear. Well, we strive to make a better universe here. You can see why some of your people might believe that, Overseer, and want to be part of it. He scoffs. I'm far too set in my ways and have far too much to lose. Maybe the next generation will have a better answer, or choose to accept it. Lord knows that it's been offered. Captain, I apologize for my aggressive actions when we first met. And I for mine, sir. Splendid. We will see each other soon, I'm sure. There is much. We will be dumping several, several ships worth of stuff through this. Oh, sending several ships through this hub in the future. Perhaps even some trades eventually. You know, despite what you may have encountered of our species, Malon Prime is actually a very lovely place, and I would recommend that you visit it, provided that you keep your promises not provide that you promise not to attempt to undermine the 
uh, waste ex waste disposal cartels while you visit? Of course, overseer. And with that, he will board his shuttle and will depart the station. After he leaves, I'll tap my comm badge. Uh, Captain Crawford to Master Chief Ember. Uh, go ahead, sir. We're on our way back now. Um, do you have a favorite... Uh, my terminology is a little off. A fighting sport, as it were? You're going to have to run that by me in more simpler terms, sir. Um, what's your favorite way to fight? Well, personally, I like decking people in the schnoz. Uh, it usually gets the most visceral response. I'm not sure if I'm exactly up for that kind of fighting, but meet me in the training room. I think I'm more than due for another round of it. Very good, sir. I end the channel, tur turn to Galen, and I say, well, it looks like you're going to be needed in the uh, security room shortly, but uh, what are we going to do with that? And I pointed a chunk of meat that we've acquired from somewhere. Whether it's the kraken meat or it's the fish meat, I leave to your imagination. <laughs> you got a little creative with the transporters on your way home. That works. We I mean, we got to have a B-plot. You yep. always have a B-plot. Yes, indeed. <laughs> In this case, it's foreign meat. <laughs> uh, Galen's going to be just looking off into the distance, um, not doing his typical smile or anything like that there, and um, he will have a data pad of the creature that got shot. Sorry, did you say something? I was making one of my witty remarks that you would have scoffed at anyway. My apologies. It's a, it, it's fine. It'll heal. It'll be fine. It's not that. It's a creature. If it is not of sentience conscious, it has habits, routines, and migration patterns. This is probably its feeding ground. We've wait, now scared wait, it wait, away. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're saying that this hellish place is where those things come to mate and feed? Potentially. And now we've scared it off, tainted the area. This could affect its generations and procreations. We could be watching the end of an interesting and very rare species because Al we got trigger happy. Alternatively, it's going to come back with friends. We're going to need a bigger boat. <laughs> uh, we'll see. All right. Okay, so does the captain wish to roleplay out the scene with Ember in the gym? Or shall we just leave it to imagination? Um, I think I'm fine with roleplaying it out. Okay. Because the last time the fight went well. Uh, rather one-sided, but it went amusingly. So. Oh yeah, it was with Dolrum, and he kicked my ass. Yes, so... indeed. Okay, so we are going to have the closing scene with the captain and Master Chief in the security office. All right. Uh, who wishes to watch this? Or who else wishes to be here? I'll come. Um, I'll have Hennis show up. <laughs> yeah, she is after all security. Yeah. I think Zan would also be present. Very well. The small cup in hand. Galen? No, he's going to be studying that creature and plotting out potential uh, migration paths for it. All right. Elias will be there. Elias. Er oh, right. Your, your son. Right. Okay. Uh, Jensen will be there. Of course. Okay. Uh, feel free to play out the scene. So, Captain, huh. what'll it be? Fists, blunted axes, swords, I've got spears, I've got uh, maces, um, I've got talking, I'm just gonna go at her and, like, try and All punch right. her. 
Let's see. Um, Doram's just thinking, well, I saw that coming. <laughs> and uh, and uh, Hedis is like, uh, yeah, monologue. Monologue is a. I, I never monologue. It gives the enemy an opening. Let's see. So what? Daring, uh, daring security. security. <laughs> yep. Okay. Hmm. I obviously do not have an applicable focus. Um. Can I challenge one of my values and immediately replace it with something else? I'm assuming by... Uh, I believe you have to pick the new value at the end of the session. So Yeah, it's definitely yeah. at the end of the session. I mean, you can challenge the value now, but you'll have okay, to gotcha. go without it uh, until next session. Gotcha. Never mind, then we won't do that now, then. Wow. Okay. Um, you do have your determination. Yeah, but I don't really have anything oh, that works right. here. Um, because all of it's like diplomacy stuff. Well, some rules are made to be broken. Even the prime directive, so basically like dirty fighting, maybe. I mean, just for the sake of humor, I'm going. I'll go. F I'll let you have it. Beautiful. <laughs> so that's. One success. <laughs> mm. Okay, that's... And your response, Master Chief. There's two. Uh... Two successes, so I will just go ahead and roll me some damage. Oh dear, I appear to have six challenge die. <laughs> Please don't tell me you have mean right hook. <laughs> no, I have piercing two. You're lucky. Oh, <laughs> Good. Don't yeah, remember. yeah, that uh, that happened about it as well as it was. So I literally catch your punch midair, and I just slowly turn to you and give you a warm smile, and I say, Captain, let me show you how it's really done. And then I just knee you in the stomach as hard as I think I can without breaking anything, and then just let you drop to the mat. All righty. Dorm just goes, saw that coming. coming. Yeah. Yeah, really. yeah, you and I haven't yet. Who did she? Uh, I think your comment was over, was overspoken, Dalrum. What was that? I just look up. You know, Master Chief, you and I haven't sparred yet. I mean, I can do this all day. I really can. I'm in fact, uh, before you get in the ring, uh, I point at uh, Rafati and I say, what did the captain do wrong? Sorry, could you repeat that there? I It, oh. it cut I out a bit early say, for me. Yeah, I say, tell me, what did the captain do wrong? Oh. Mm. <sighs> he stepped into the ring to begin with, Master Chief. I mean, yes, that's the obvious answer, but can you give me a little bit more? Didn't permit you to finish monologuing. Yes. Always let your villains finish monologuing. <laughs> it's more time to plan strategy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Takes a swig of whatever's in his uh, mug. <laughs> but uh, I actually point past Dolroom at Jensen and I say, Mr. Jensen... What say you on this affair? What do you think the captain did wrong? The captain let his emotions get the better of him. He decided to attack aggressively without taking in the situation. He didn't scan for any weaknesses and decided to go in blind. That works if you're going against someone who doesn't know anything of how to fight. But you're going against someone that's your chief of security. What you should have done is gouged at her eyes when she's clutching her head and then break the rest of her. Leave her a mess, don't let her get up, and if need be, kill her. You didn't do any of that. You just went with your fist and thought you'd be bacho. It's a little bit more of a zealous answer than I expected, but it's a well answer all the same. 
Anyways, Mr. Dolrum and Hell, Mr. Jensen, if either of you would care to step into the ring. I tell you what, I'll be generous. I will let you both come into the ring. We'll do a 2v1. And Crawford just kind of slowly crawls out of the ring. <laughs> Uh, uh, he's 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 having fun he's having fun yeah. <laughs> for the first time today i'll get to roll jensen's gonna take off his long trench coat and loosen up his tie and thank you for that there uh spencer <laughs> oh you're welcome you're very welcome background zom's going to hand captain crawford the cup you might need this more than i do And uh, once both of you are ready, I say, well, gentlemen, I think it's only fair that it is a 2v1. I get to go, and then before I say first, I'm already on the move. Question for GM. Yes. Second time activating Jensen here, I'll second, you know, thanks. Yeah. Uh, how's it all work for giving him stuff? Um, you can boost one of his disciplines, one of his attributes, give him a focus, give him a value. Um, I believe that's the extent. You can also give him a talent, oh, talent. That's uh, and it's getting. it's also important to note that you can only upgrade the discipline and attribute once for the character completely. Like, so if you do it once, you have to make a note of it so that you don't do it again. I'm going to increase the security to five. I'll mark, I'll mark that down. Huh. I had okay that I had not known about that in. I thought that was a. Uh cumulative thing you could do it multiple times no because otherwise what would happen is people would just keep activating supporting characters and then they would end up better than pcs yeah. because they would get more advancements than the pcs would yeah that makes sense i would draw the line at base pc status myself but that makes sense okay it's nice having um i can't do math now it's a uh, 16 stress <laughs> All right. I'm out of story, right. so you guys roll. Yep. So uh, I'm going to spend that uh, one momentum to make this an area attack, which means I'm hitting you both at the same time. That prehand tile tail. Uh-huh. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and use my determination uh, to never go down without a fight to get my two free successes right off the bat. Mm -hmm. And because I really feel like driving the point home, even though it is a little bit of a dick move, uh, I am going to give the GM three threat nice. for a grand total of, actually no hold up, because I use my determination, I give you two threat for the third die. Is it three three threat for the, th oh right, nope, sorry, you got one die for, for the third dice and then, yep, that makes sense. All right, so that's a grand total of uh, six, six successes. successes. Jesus. Alrighty. So ah. you all need to roll seven, or you're getting hit. Well, seeing as it's the end of the the session, I'll burn my uh, determination for an autocrit with the value of the finest survive. Good value. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also going to give you threat for two additional dice, so that's five threat. Okay. Yeah. And I have hand to hand combat as a focus. I have survival as a focus. I have bold security. I have mean right hook. This oh can be God. <laughs> and it's daring security. I also have six, and I have a bold security, so I will reroll that zero. <laughs> no. Oh, look oh. at that. Oh. Uh, All right. Um, I don't have a value. <laughs> um, hey, Jim. Yo. Six threat. <laughs> oh, man. I. Okay. <laughs> um, now I have to right. figure out something to do with this threat, because. You're giving it to me, so I should probably figure out something to do with it. Hmm. Okay. 
you know. Well, I was yeah. trying to deliberately limit myself. <laughs> yeah. But a, no, we're going Super Saiyan now, apparently. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, uh, <laughs> what I would say is uh, you probably have two options here, Commander Dolrum. Um, you can either hit me uh, and Jensen will take the full brunt of my blow, or you could basically guard on behalf of Jensen, and it's a stalemate. I'll guard. All right. So, you know, I come in with the uh, mean left hook along with the uh, whip-like tail. And, of course, you block it rather artfully, and I say, hmm, you've been doing some training. I can appreciate that. Well, before I was here, I was you on a different station, so I know my stuff. Ah, but did they teach you about how they do it on Ryza? Ryza Ryzeans actually do things. You know, I should know this. My husband's a Ryzean. I look at Jensen and I say, Mr. Jensen, what you're about to see will shock you. And I say, computer, activate command program Galen Ember Theta. And because this is how we're going to end the session, Ember's uniform transforms into a nurse uniform. End of scene. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm... Yep. I'm cool with that. I will spend all my threat that I've accrued as DM <laughs> to forcibly end the scene. <laughs> there we go that's how somewhere, i'm using all the threat you gave me somewhere <laughs> in sick bay galen just looks over he just sneezes he's like i'm not programmed to sneeze <laughs> <laughs> well good session everyone i'm quite pleased yeah. with how that worked out so yeah. thank you to my players thank you to all that watch and so Quick stream announcement starting on dis on Thursday, August the 29th, then Thursday or then September s or Friday, September the 6th, there will be a two-part crossover episode between Star Trek Adventures Nighthawk and Star Trek Adventures Cerberus Station. So my next session will be Thursday, September the 5th or sorry, Thursday, August the 15th for Star Trek Nighthawk. Cerberus will return thir Friday the 23rd. So, on behalf of myself, my players, thanks for listening, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.